Today it's going to be one of the most exciting rebuilds we have done this year, in my opinion. We're going to take on Doncaster in League 2 in England with that beautiful green kit. And the green is a color that is going to be very important in today's video. It is part of the Brazil flag, as you know. And that is what this video is all about. We're going to take on Doncaster, not just in a simple rebuild, but in a sprint to glory style. We are only able to buy Brazilian players into this team. And since the Brazilian league is not part of the game, sadly, we will be able to bring in any Brazilian from any league in the world and try to rebuild Doncaster in a way where at the end of our journey, this team will be flowing with Joga Bonito and doing incredible things on the pitch when we get to that Champions League final, hopefully. I cannot wait to take on this and maybe even discover a couple of Wonder Kids I've never used before. But I do have a couple of Brazilian players in my mind that I want to go ahead and showcase to you guys because I've been watching them loads in the past two years and I think they will be amazing in football. Let the games begin! This is our squad that we're going to be using to start things off. Now, obviously, I won't be able to go ahead and change this team completely within the first season. Our team probably doesn't have an insane budget. It's only 3 million. But that's also the joy of this Sprint to Glory type rebuild because we only get to buy some low-rated Brazilians that probably none of us know. If I know any of them, I'm definitely getting them, that's for sure. I would love to have some cheap beasts in here that I actually know of, but I want to know one thing from you guys in the comments down below. Now that Neymar has left to go and play in Saudi, currently in FIFA, the highest-rated player that is from Brazil is obviously Neymar. Now, alongside him at the 89 rating, you actually have Alisson. I want to know from you guys, do you think Alisson is going to remain to be the highest rated Brazilian player in the upcoming years? Or do you think there's going to be someone rising up to that level? Because usually we always had some insanely high rated Brazilians in FIFA games throughout the years. So for example, Ronaldinho and all that stuff and Neymar obviously for multiple years. But right now it's not looking like there's that many incredibly top top talented players out there apart from maybe vinicius jr do you think he's gonna get to that level let me know in the comments down below as we dive straight in into this one Whew. This is going to be fun. I also think it sounds like fun. To start things off, I've gone ahead and sold Anderson, Taylor, Rowe. These guys have left the club. They were some of the oldest members of this team, leaving us with a budget of around 4 million to start things off with. And I think I want to build off the back. And for that reason, first up, a new goalkeeper. His name is Victor Aznar. He is a Brazilian lad that plays for Cadiz coming in into our club. And as I said, I want to build up from the back. So this is going to be an important one. A Brazilian goalkeeper, just like Alisson. Hopefully, he's going to be able to do well on his feet as well. He comes in with a 63 rating, which is obviously... Immediately, the highest rating in the team, along with some of the others in here, which is impressive. He's 19 years old, six foot two tall, so not necessarily the tallest. But hey, maybe he's good with his feet, and that is obviously what every manager wants these days, right? Next up, Paulo Eduardo, a center back. Yes, we keep building the defense because I do think it's going to make the biggest difference in our league positioning. I honestly do, because attackers just do score all the time no matter what Rashawn Williams plus 400k for Paulo Eduardo right here and he comes in straight away to take over his position I'm going to be playing in a 4-3-3 attacking formation generally speaking because I do want that typical Brazilian number 10 in this team and also have the dribblers on the wings that can do a lot and then midfielders who can do both defensive and offensive actions in this team keeping it the Brazilian way and then up top, we're going to try and find our own R9. But Paulo Eduardo comes in. He's apparently left with it. Okay. From Santa Clara, which is obviously the Portuguese league. I just checked. He hasn't necessarily played any games for them this season. So, uh, yeah, maybe he's still just a raw uh, diamond in a rough. And uh, at some point, he might pop up in our memories. But for now, he is just a no-name that we never heard of that now is part of our big plan. Big plan. And now on to our biggest purchase yet. 
It is, of course, a striker. It is that man right there who is going to put on the shirt. And I guess the number 10. Now, he's not a 10. He is actually a striker for us. So probably should change his number to a 9. But I'm sure I'll forget. But Pablo Felipe is the biggest signing so far that I had spent the most money on. 1.9 million plus George Miller to get this Brazilian striker into our team. He comes in as a 67 rated player. He's only 18 years old. He's not small. He's six foot tall. This could be an amazing one that we keep a hold of for a long time. But honestly, I got to say, I do want to have some underrated hidden gems in the team. But I don't necessarily want to have players in this team that don't actually play for their teams in real life as well and perform. So as we progress, the team will keep changing. I couldn't find that much information about Pablo Felipe, but hey, maybe he does well. We are going into the season with this team possibly. I just need to make one more change. Just one more. Now on to the transfer with the best name. It is Costa. But trust me, when I show you in just a second, you'll understand what I mean. His name is Baltazar. I'm sorry, but that name is so sick. I love it. If he would have become a little bit more prominent of a player, he currently plays in Switzerland, a left back that actually plays in center midfield too. So this is one of the players, one of the first ones that actually comes into our team that actually plays first team football. Baltazar, 22-year-old Brazilian that name, that smile, he should be a more prominent player. Some people should know of him. Just that name alone. But hey, now we are done with transfers. He comes in with a 62 rating to play alongside Paulo Eduardo. And we are now good to go for the season. I want to see if this team can get high up in the league table. I cannot believe what I'm seeing right now. Our team was legit outside of the top 10 in January and now it is in the fourth position. Nearly got guaranteed promotion. Just a goal difference making the difference in the end. This is the squad. Look at Felipe. He's up to a 73. Midfield has no Brazilians as we know. Baltazar 66. Paulo Eduardo 67. And Aznar has gone up as well. Which is great. Now, I do believe we are part of the playoffs. So here we go. How is this going to go for our team? Are we going to be able to get promotion into a division above us? We're going to be playing against Gary Neville's team. And Gary Neville Salford are kicking us out. No chance. Wow, it actually happened. Doncaster will have to remain in the bottom division for one more time. And for that to change, we need to make some quick signings in the upcoming season. Oh, and by the way, in this season, Pablo Felipe has gotten 28 goals and three assists and a plus six in overall growth. He's had a great time. Baltazar, by the way, with six goal contributions from left back. That's very impressive, Billy. This next one is a huge one. Savio, yes. So we have gotten ourselves Savinho or Savio, I believe on his shirt in real life, it does say Savinho, a Brazilian. That is a PSV Eindhoven player, or actually not anymore, because he is now playing with Girona. There is some sort of loan deal going on there. I completely forgot which way around it was, but I've spent my entire budget on him because I wanted to bring in the first big name that some people actually might know. Savio is such a good player. I'm currently watching all of his games with Girona because I am, I've become somewhat of a big follower of Girona throughout these past few months. And I think he looks incredible. The way he dribbles, the way he gets past people, the speed and the agility that he is showing, which he has also done in the under-21s tournament. He is such a good player. So, Savio, welcome to our team. You're the first big name. Now, I need promotion. And I need to stop having voice cracks. May 2024, hopefully no playoffs this time. Real quick look into the league table to realize that we are taking the Brazilians into League 2. No, League 1, stupid me. 96 points on our team. And I gotta say, guys, one thing I noticed was that Pablo Felipe's potential has gone to potential to be special. Which is impressive. But... I think what I'm going to do in the next season to increase our budget is selling him. Yes, I will let go of uh, Pablo Felipe. As I said, I want to have players in this team that actually play football. 
They don't need to be in an amazing team, but at least be in a squad that, where they are a main part of the squad in real life. So, yeah. Pablo Felipe, I appreciate you, but Savio has got up to a 78. Eduardo, 73. Baltazar, 72. Asnar up to a 73 as well. But as you can tell, still so many positions to fill and just not the right budget to do so. So, real quick look into Pablo Felipe's performance alongside Savio. 27 and 5, Savio 18 and 7, and then Baltazar, the left back, getting 6 goals and 3 assists. Great stuff from him, but let's move on finally into League 1 and selling on Felipe. Now, I actually found out that Pablo currently does play for Famalicao, but, or Famalicao, however you want to say it, but his name on the stat tracking sites was a different one. It was just Pablo. And obviously I was looking for Felipe and I just couldn't find it. But he is still going. The opportunity to cash in on him was too big. It is going to be immense for our team. I can build an entire starting 11 for League 1. And this is the prize. Galatasaray keeps spending money. 70 million for Pablo Felipe. I cannot wait to spend it all. Our initial budget was actually 8 million. Now, it's a lot more. Joao Pedro. Yes, the striker position needs to be changed immediately. And it is going to be the Brazilian that used to play for Watford. Looked insane doing so and now has joined Brighton. And as we all know, Brighton always seem to buy players and then sell them on for six times the price. So this is going to be quite interesting to see Joao Pedro play in the Premier League. I watched him in preseason, haven't had the chance to check him out in Premier League football, but in preseason, I really liked what he has showcased for his team. This did cost me a big chunk of the budget, but he comes in at a 79 rating, and I only had to spend like, what, 17, 18 million on him? And I sold an 80 rated Felipe for like 70. So this is a great deal for our club, and we are bringing in an amazing player straight away. Now... On to the rest of the team. On to the next attacking Brazilian. It is going to be Samuelino. This guy was at Valencia last season as a loaned out player. Already showcased his abilities. Has now returned to his parent club, which is Atletico Madrid. And he was supposed to be loaned out. And somehow he hasn't. He seems to be getting some playtime off the bench at Atleti. I wonder if they're contemplating keeping him. I don't know his situation right now, if he has gone out on loan in the past days or not. But I did see him come off the bench. And now, whoa, he comes in with a very, very good rating. So here he is a 79 in the left wing position. I am assuming he's going to be doing a great job for us. Same rating as Savio. I love that. 87 pace, 71 shooting, 72 passing, 78 dribbling. No four-star skills. That's odd. She should definitely have four-star skills, eh? On to the next one, who in my opinion is one of the most exciting Brazilians to watch right now. He's a championship player, but Gabriel Sara. I don't understand why no one has bought this guy off of Norwich City yet. He is pure quality. He can play as a center mid, he can play as a CDM even if needed, and someone that can definitely help out in offensive situations. For the first four games of the season, he already has three goal contributions. I believe it's two assists and a goal. And he's just such a technically gifted player for that Norwich side. And I just think it makes too much sense for us to bring him in. He's going to take over the camp position. Yes, I do want him to be the main guy right there. He actually goes up to an 80 in that position, which makes a lot of sense. He has 80 shooting, 76 passing, great dribbling, great physicality on him as well. He is quite tall, 5'10". Actually looks taller in real life. But yeah, this is an amazing setup that we have right now. But I don't have any more money. So I've, I've definitely gone very attack heavy on this one. We need goals and assists and loads of them. We smashed it. Yes. Take a look at this. Doncaster first with 110 points. It just makes sense. I mean, we have some incredible players right now. I'll be honest with you. 110 ruined everyone in here. And at some point, we will catch up with the level. But Pablo Felipe's sale has been so big for this team. We have been able to build an incredible front four. Our center mids are trash, I'll be honest. Our left back, left center back, and also our goalkeeper are looking good. 
while other positions definitely need to be worked on. Four spots that we definitely need to upgrade and we'll get there. Don't you worry. Now, our team, goal scorer, Joao Pedro, 31 and 7, Lino 18 and 6, Sara with the 15 and 7 and Savio 13 and 11. Honestly, guys, I think this front four that we have built here, it would do damage like absolute damage in terms of chaos in the attack and would be so hard to stop for uh, opponents. But hey, let's move forward into the championship and see what we can achieve up there because obviously we'll be getting a little bit more cash and uh, see if we can bring in some of the right players this team needs. Seems like we have to calm down a little bit because our budget for the new season is only 18 million. I don't think I'll be able to bring in four players for that price. That will be all right. So maybe we just focus on right back or actually no, maybe just the two center mids because they are the lowest rated players. This is the new CDM of the team. His name is Victor. Bobsin, a man that actually plays in Korea. Yes, South Korea for Daegu FC alongside Cecilia, the GOAT of K-League football. If you know, you know, he is coming in and he's a CDM. I legitimately cannot find center midfielders that fit our budget, guys. So we will have to change formation from the one that we had with the 4th for today with the attack. We're going to change it to the defensive one, the de this one. But I will push Sara up front a little bit. So basically, we're just going to be running a 4-2-3-1 at this stage, uh, which kind of sucks. I wanted to get center midfielders later on. Hopefully, we can change that. But let's bring in the right center midfielder as well. This guy has some good stats on him, but I'll be honest, nothing special for now. Remember when we got Pablo into the team for Famalisao? This is another player from that team. It is Gustavo Asuncao. So many times when I've done these Brazilian rebuilds, he does pop up in them. I realize there aren't that many great, talented Brazilians in the game at the moment due to the fact that we don't have the full licensing for the Brazilian league. If there is one league I want in FIFA, it genuinely is that Brazilian league. There are so many incredible talents that now teams in the Brem are picking up for insane amounts of money and we have never heard of them. Like, that's how far it gets. So... I really hope we get that licensing back at some point. I heard it's one of the hardest ones to get because the teams kind of work individually rather than under one hub. So that makes it very hard. But Asu Zhao comes in alongside Bobsin to strengthen our team. And hopefully, maybe we can run through the championship as well. As things stand, we are part of the playoffs to get into Premier League football. And Burnley could stop us, but they won't. They will not be capable of doing so. Vincent Company, I'm sorry, you failed. But our team has obviously succeeded. Look at the attack. All 86s, but Gabriel Sara on an 87. Asun Sao, decent amount of growth. Pops in, coming up with the 77. Why are you looking so mean? And then we have a good left-hand side in our defense with Olovo, the original in the team, still over here. And Seaman doing a good job, but Asnar on an 83, looking like an amazing goalkeeper at this stage. Clearly, though, the bench and also certain positions in our starting 11 need improvement. Now that we are a Premier League club, we should be getting big chunks of money. And that will help me to bring in even, no, even more of the Brazilians into the team that you and I know. And yeah. Joao Pedro, 24 and 8. Lino, 18 and 15. Amazing season from the Atletico Madrid player. Gabriel Sara, good one. Savio as well. You can tell the front four has done a heavy loading on this one. They have gone ahead and done the best for this team to get into Premier League football. And we have done so after going ahead and running through the, uh, the playoffs. Now... It's Premier League time and big transfers time. This is my first signing for the new season. It's a Brazilian centre-back. Now, again, as I'm going through the players of Brazil, I'm just realising there aren't that many in the game. It's really unfortunate to see, but here we are. Tuta is the one from Eintracht Frankfurt. Now that Indica is gone, there are openings in that Eintracht Frankfurt defence where he definitely could establish himself as a starting 11 player. Tuta, big talent, just needs to make that next step in his career and really become a known name in the Bundesliga that people respect. So he comes in, 
with an 81 rating, massive upgrade in the centre-back position. Defensive upgrades are going to be key to us. The CDMs, I might not be able to upgrade right now, so they might survive under the season in the Premier League. But the right-back spot definitely can't stay like that. Mauro Jr. is putting on the shirt for his new club, Doncaster. The reason why I'm going for him is because in real life, this man has gone through so many injuries back to back. The last time he was playing consistently was in May 2022. It's such a long time away. And he has just had bad luck after bad luck. The PSV defender was doing great when he was fit. So I want to give him a chance right here to go ahead and revive his career and do well for us. Right back, left play, left back, and also centre attacking mid. Could also play in like, I believe he could play like left mid as well. He is such a good player. I really hope he gets to be fit again and actually play well for PSV. But yeah, he is a great one to bring in. 281 rated players brought in and that's all it is. We do not have any more money to spend, but I'm confident in my team. Well, the Brazilian market also still offers free agents. So I got involved, got myself Cavallo, a center forward who I probably will turn into a cam to have him as a backup to Gabriel Sara. Garcia, who has now come in, a left winger. And then we also brought in a right back in Cruz. He is a 5'9 tall, 76 rated player from Brazil. And Silva, who is a goalkeeper, 6'2 tall. Great backup for us once more. I think those signings make a lot of sense. We needed that extra strength on the bench. And now, finally, let's see how this goes. Let me show you something. We have beaten Manchester City in the month of May, which kind of tells me that we are doing a good job. So let's go ahead and check how things have been going for this team. What? Top four already. We are a Champions League club. That's insane. Manchester United fails to get past us. Only three points between us. And is it justified? I mean, attacking-wise, hell yes. It's a team that could easily win the Champions League. But then, midfield, I mean, it ain't great. Defensively, we are actually looking quite solid. I, I really like the growth there. Aznar is looking good as well. If I can find any options for the midfield, I will go for it next season. Now that we are a Champions League club, I should have a much better budget and I should be able to get some of the better players in world football, especially some top, top Brazilians into our team. And João Pedro, Lino, Sara, Savio at front, front four has been unstoppable ever since. And it just continues going that way. I just wish these guys had actual real faces just like Joao Pedro. It's such a shame. Guess what? I found the solution. This is the player. The only one that really makes sense. Bruno G. Of course, he is the one coming into the club right now. From PSG for 82.5 million. That's going to cost me my entire freaking budget. But Bobson, I'm sorry, pal. You're looking at me the wrong way. I'm going to take him out of the team. Put Bruno right in there. Turn him into a center mid, right? And now he's just going to ruin people for me. He's going to be the part that takes the game from defense into offense because clearly Asunsao is more bothered about defending than anything else. So hopefully things are going to go well with Bruno as we take on Champions League football. So we got past Inter, it seems. So the second game was a draw. Now Atletico Madrid, whose match I'm actually watching as we speak. And Atleti is doing a great job. 3-0 up. But here we beat them. And Atleti nearly scored as well. Griezmann just sliding past the ball. But we are up against Liverpool in the semi-finals. Why don't I ever get to play against Liverpool in the Champions League final in this game? It's a 2-1 victory in the first one. And a 2-0 victory in the other. To play against Real Madrid. All right then. Real Madrid, you are going to be my nemesis on this one. Hopefully, we can have a good game. And just do our job. Come on, the lads. I believe in you. And we will also take a look into, of course, everything that comes together with the league, the Premier League. How well have we done there? How well have the players done? How are the stats looking? Are we actually a team that deserves to be in the Champions League final? In the Premier League, only fourth position. Liverpool with 91 points got it done. It seems like on long-term uh, competitions, we are not that good. But playoffs... Our team is ready to roll. And 
That's good enough for me, I guess. But the team, talking about them, this front four, I cannot wait to use them in game. It is going to be so much fun. I can see it already. And then Guimaraes and Asunsal looking great. If I oh, someone paid Junior's release clause. Well, good thing I have Cruz. Good thing we have him. It's a great team, but who the hell bought my Mauro Jr.? How did he leave? How much did they sell him for? 97.8. That is so freaking painful to see. But it is what it is. We'll just take a quick look into the performances. I assume the top four dominates again. Yep. Joao, Lino, Sara, Savio. Guimaraes, no chance to get in there. This team is just ready. And who are they ready for? For this Real Madrid side with the likes of Vinicius Jr., Jota, Valverde, Chuameni, Ramsey, Kamavinga, Ba, Militao, Gomez, Alexander Arnold, and Courtois. Definitely a strong team. Courtois and his boys against us in our beautiful green kits. Now, guys, we need to perform, but also, I want Joga Bonito. Yes, great tackle by Arsene Sal. And here goes our main man, Lino. Nice move. Sara, back heel and everything. And the skill moves on top. Across to the right. Back into the middle. Again, look at this. Are you kidding? What? I could have taken a shot. Vinny. Vinny and his boys. They make it look so easy. Waiting for the right moment. There we go. That's the right moment, ain't it? Cut in. Pass. Smash. Oh, what? Mate, how are we not equalizing here? Wow. Are you kidding? What a ball that was. What a freaking ball that was. And by the way, as I'm playing, Atletico Madrid are playing against Rayo Vallecano and they are 7-0 up. It's an insane game. Here goes the run of Gabriel Sara. Who stops? Wait! Bang! Are you... Are you guys okay? This ain't good. Oh, wow. That was close. That was really close. And here goes... João Pedro. The Joga Bonito worked out this time. Equalizer. I'll take it. I will take it. As I score my goal, Atletico Madrid score their seventh against Rayo Vallecano. I am watching an incredible game of football on the side. Atletico attacking, not just defending. It's great to see. It's beautiful. Mine. Mine. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Go on, João Pedro. João Pedro is the man. He just is. 2-1 to come back. For the Brazilian sprinter glory. Don Casta ha, are just doing it. Ha, what does that mean? Ha. Paulo Eduardo, one of the players that has been with us from the beginning, is going to be lifting the trophy as we end this beautiful sprinter glory. It was a joy to watch. The way Joao Pedro ruined his opponents. The back line of Real Madrid not capable of stopping us today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you. Appreciate every single one of you. And as I said before, get active on my Instagram. The link is in the description down below. I am responding to most people that message me. So if you want to get in contact with me, that's the best way to do it. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care and peace.